In the chapter on linear algebra, we showed that eigenvector eigenvalue analysis can help us solve for the dynamics of systems in which the population change over a discrete time step in one species can depend on the various populations throughout the system. The purpose of this and the following two videos is to show how this trick also works for linear systems of differential equations. In this video, we will describe a toy transcription translation model. It's often the model you see on the second day of Systems Biology 101. We will analyze the dynamics qualitatively by using the system's phase portrait to visualize its null clines and critical point. In the next video, we will apply eigenvector eigenvalue analysis, and in the third video, we will walk through a crib sheet of qualitative dynamics that two-dimensional linear systems of differential equations can display. We are inside a cell. RNA polymerase can transcribe a gene with rate coefficient beta m. There are m copies of messenger RNA in the cell, and rm plus is the number of transcription events that have proceeded since a reference time. Messenger RNA degrades with rate coefficient alpha m, and the number of messenger RNA degradation events since a reference time is rm minus. The time rate of change of the messenger RNA population is owing in part to transcription events and owing in part to messenger RNA degradation. The partial change in messenger RNA level owing directly to a transcription event is a gain of 1. If the RNA polymerase, gene, and other reactants contributing to the chemical reaction we call transcription are present in constant amounts, the law of mass action prescribes a constant reaction rate here called beta m. The partial change in messenger RNA level owing directly to a messenger RNA degradation event is a loss of 1. At this level of detail, the basic reactant for messenger RNA degradation is a copy of messenger RNA itself, so the law of mass action prescribes a time rate equal to a coefficient alpha m multiplied against the level of messenger RNA. dmdt equals beta m minus alpha m times the messenger RNA level. Ribosomes translate messenger RNA with rate coefficient beta. The amount of protein in the cell is x, and R plus is the number of translation events that have proceeded since a reference time. Protein is degraded with rate coefficient alpha, and the number of protein degradation events that have occurred since a reference time is R minus. The time derivative of protein X is owing in part to translation events and owing in part to protein degradation. The partial change in protein level owing to a translation event is a gain of one copy of protein. If the number and reactivity of ribosomes in this cell is assumed to be constant, the law of mass action prescribes a time rate that is a constant coefficient beta times the messenger RNA level. The partial change in protein level owing directly to a protein degradation event is a loss of one protein. The law of mass action prescribes one power of x dx dt equals beta times the messenger RNA level minus alpha times the protein level. The plots in these videos are generated using parameter values beta m equals 1, alpha m equals 2, beta equals 1, and alpha equals 1. These differential equations specify rates for molecular generation and degradation that depend on current molecular concentrations. When messenger RNA level is just high enough so that messenger RNA degradation just balances out transcription, the messenger RNA level is neither increasing nor decreasing with time. Its slope or inclination with time is zero or null. If the rates of translation and protein degradation are balanced, the time derivative of protein level can similarly show no, zero, or null inclination. Protein translation and degradation can be balanced for various values of m and x. Let's study the situation where messenger RNA is constant in time. Move the degradation stuff to the other side and divide to isolate m. The time derivative of m equals zero along a vertical line at m equals beta m over alpha m in the x versus m plane. The x versus m plane is called the phase plane of the system. Every instantaneous state of this model system can be characterized by protein level X and messenger RNA level M. Now let's look at the situation in which dx dt equals zero. 
move stuff to the other side and divide to isolate x as a function of m. The time derivative of protein level vanishes along a slanted line x equals beta times m over alpha. The yellow vertical line is where the level of messenger RNA is constant in time. It's called the so-called NOC line for m. The blue line is where the level of protein is constant in time. It's called the so-called NOC line for x. The word NOC line refers to a curve, like the yellow line or the blue line, along which a variable of interest has no slope in time. The intersection of the NOC lines is where the time derivatives of m and x are simultaneously zero. This is called a critical point. It is a steady state. If the system is initially arranged in this state, it remains there permanently. The messenger RNA level at this state is mc equals beta m over alpha m. Substituting mc into the equation for the blue line gives the protein level at the critical point, xc. Along the yellow NOC line, transcription and messenger RNA degradation rates are precisely equal, but for a state with less messenger RNA to the left, messenger RNA degradation is not sufficient to cancel out transcription. DMDT will be positive. Over a short interval of time delta t, the system will drag toward the right a distance dmdt times delta t, which is rate times duration. Closer to the NOC line, with higher levels of messenger RNA, messenger RNA degradation almost cancels out transcription, so the quiver is shorter. The lengths of the quiver shrink in a graded fashion as we move closer to the NOC line. To the right of the NOC line, high levels of messenger RNA correspond to messenger RNA degradation rates that exceed transcription rates. DMDT is negative, so the quivers point to the left. Again, the quivers are short near the NOC line, and they become longer in a graded fashion as we move away from the NOC line. Because the differential equation describing DMDT depends only on M, not on X, the yellow quivers at a given horizontal position in the phase plane are the same, even for different vertical positions. Along the blue NOC line, time rates of translation and protein degradation precisely cancel. For this blue point to the right of the line, meaning where messenger RNA level is relatively high, the time rate of translation exceeds the time rate for protein degradation, so the protein level increases over a short time interval delta t, as indicated by the blue quiver pointing upward. To the left of the blue NOC line, the messenger RNA level is relatively low, so the time rate of translation is less than the time rate for protein degradation. DXDT is negative, and protein level X decreases with time. We can fill in a field of quivers that become shorter in a graded fashion as we get closer to the blue NOC line from either side. Let me move the differential equations out of the way. We can draw various trajectories through the XM plane and see that the critical point is not merely a steady state, but also an asymptotically stable steady state. Cells initially starting somewhere other than the steady state move arbitrarily close to the orange dot with time. Let's study this highlighted example curve on the face portrait in more detail by plotting corresponding time courses. We need to draw another set of axes with time explicitly running from left to right. Messenger RNA starts from an initially high value and then asymptotically approaches a steady state value from above. This corresponds to the shape of the pink trajectory, starting from the right of the phase plane and then connecting toward the left. Protein starts from a low value, overshoots, and then asymptotically approaches a steady state value from above, corresponding also to the shape of the pink curve, which starts out relatively low at the right, reaches a peak, and then descends again, moving toward the left. The amount of messenger RNA eventually gets very close to its steady state level, but during the temporary time interval while it is present in high abundance, it contributes to a temporarily high rate of protein translation, so the protein level shows a temporary bump above levels it will later approach. Those later protein levels correspond to lower levels of messenger RNA and thus of translation. 
In this video, we represented the dynamics of the transcription translation model by drawing NOAC lines and identifying a critical point in the face plane. Sketching NOAC lines, critical points, quivers, and trajectories in the face plane is called drawing a phase portrait. In the next video, we show how eigenvector eigenvalue analysis can provide a complete analytic description of the dynamics of the system.